Eamon Khan here, four seconds out with trainer Tony Sims in Las Vegas of all places. Tony, good to see you. Before we start with Conor Ben, I just want to uh, rewind slightly with John Ryder, who was unsuccessful in his bout against Jaime Munguia. What's the status of John Ryder? A lot of talk and whispers about retirement. Is that the case? Um, what do you feel ne is next for John? Yeah, he's uh, obviously he's fought everyone in, in, his, in his weight in the division, who's the main, main fighters. And uh, he's obviously had a great career. He's 14 years as a professional now. And... Um, you know, that, that's a decision that he's got to make for himself. I said to him, you know, if you do decide to retire or you fight on this, totally got to be your decision. So he, he'll think about what his next move is and, uh, you know, I'm sure he'll let us all know. How much of a say do you have it or influence do you have it? If John was to say, look, I want to continue, you're, you, you're happy to say, let's go? Yeah, because I think, you know, when, they, when they're top fighters, like John's, John is... Um, it's a decision they need to make solely by themselves because what what I don't like seeing is a fighter to retire prematurely and then like a year later want to fight again. So when, when he, you know, when he finally announces his retirement, he needs to retire for good and not, not make that comeback. From Ryder to Ben, Ben in Las Vegas against Pete Dobson. Talking about finding Pete Dobson as the opponent, what challenges do you think he'll bring to the ring on Saturday night? Well, he's unbeaten, and, and you know, an unbeaten fighter who's never tasted defeat, or always believe have belief in theirself, and uh, you know, um, he's obviously a tough opponent, and uh, he's a he's a good fighter for uh, Connor to headline in Vegas with. With the talk of Connor when he, when the camera is put in his face regarding the fights he wants, and he always mentions the likes of Crawford or John Ennis, he's building a bit of a rod for his back that he has to be impressive. He has to get that highlight reel knockout if he's talking about fights with the likes of Ennis and Crawford in the future. Yeah, I mean, he, he's been under the spotlight and under pressure from from his first fight because everyone, you, you know, from his first fight onward, everyone's you know wants to see the spitting double image of Nigel Benn, and that's why they look at. Uh, Legends like Nigel Benn and Chris Eubank, that's why they look at their sons and they want them to be exactly the same. But, you know, so he's been under the spotlight since day one and uh, every fight for him is a pressure fight. And uh, every fighter that he fights, opponent, you know, is desperate to beat him because they know what that, that can springboard them onto. So, but with Connor, he's, uh, he's an ultimate professional. He's always, he always keeps himself in brilliant condition and... Uh, when he's got when he's got the date of a fight lined up, he always trains. Uh, you know, he always trains fully, uh, diet in his S and C boxing. Everything that he does is uh, fully switched on for. Do you feel that Conor has a star that the American fight fans will take to specifically? Look, he's all action and goes for that knockout. So you think that they would like it, but sometimes it's difficult to sell a Brit to an American. Uh, but do you feel that he has that star and, and outside of just these two fights, we'd like to see him continue his career in the UK in the future. Uh, sorry, in the US in the future. Well, this is his third fight in the US, so you know they they do like him over here, and like you say, he's got that sort of fan friendly style. Where when you tune into him, like his dad, you know you you're gonna see uh, an ex uh, an exciting fight. You're gonna see probably nine times out of ten a knockout. So. Uh, you know, and that's why the American and the British fans like him. Um, answer to your last question is, yeah, sure, he wants to fight back in the UK and that's where his fans are based. And, uh, you know, he, uh, you know, he'd be looking to fight back in the UK, hopefully after this fight. Team and yourself confident that when the appeal comes, that you'll win the appeal and you'll be allowed to fight in the UK? Yeah, I think the appeal comes up after Connor's fight, I think late February. So, um, yeah, he's, uh, he, he's pretty confident in winning that, yeah. Do you anticipate any further roadblocks after the appeal? Do you feel that afterwards there's nothing that can be done to stop Connor from fighting the UK? Well, he's not He's not suspended even now. He's not suspended because they're appealing. He's not suspended, but, um, you know, and that's why he's allowed to fight. But it'd be nice for him to fight back in the UK. Moving forward, it's not just Conor Ben who's on the card here that you got the duty of. It's also some top prospects rising through. Talk to about those uh, top prospects and what we expect to see from them as well. Yeah, and uh, I was going to bring uh, young Jimmy Sainz and George Lidard uh, into the training camp any, anyway because obviously I had John Ryder and Joe Caldina out here and um, Conor Ben and then I was bringing them anyway, but for them to get a slot on the card, 
it's a massive opportunity for them. They're both really young and, uh, you know, off, it's, 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 a, it's a thing of dreams. Like, you know, big British fighters, top British fighters, like they, they, they've ended their career and never fought, you know, on a, on a Las Vegas bill. So for them two to, uh, and Johnny Fisher as well, for them three boys to, uh, to fight on a Las Vegas card, it's a, a massive thing. Uh, keeping the focus on the gym, uh, Craig Richards exits the gym um, and moved on to Shane McGuigan. Just your thoughts on um, what, what was the conversation leading to Craig's exit from the gym? Uh, yeah, uh, my brother Peter trained Craig. I, I didn't train him, so, but he trained out of our gym. And, uh, you know, Peter and Craig uh, split amicably and uh, I, I wished him all the well, it, all, you know, all the best in the world. You know, he's gone with Shane McGuigan, who's a good trainer. So, you know, I hope he does well. So only a couple of final things I want to get your thoughts on as a top trainer in the UK. We have some big fights coming up. First of all, AJ versus Ngannou. Uh, Ngannou seemed to have proven himself to a degree, although he didn't get the win against Tyson Fury. He did perform very well and dropped Tyson Fury. Do you feel that Ngannou can propose problems to anti Joshua? Uh, and if so, what are they and how does AJ overcome that big problem? Well, what we see from Ngannou, and we've only seen one fight for him, and we don't know what kind of mental and physical shape Fury was in for that fight, but... I mean, looking at that fight, he's obviously a dangerous fighter. He's he's a he's a very very big man and strong man, and he looks like he can punch. He looks like he can take a shot as well. Uh, boxing ability wise, we didn't see much from him, uh, and that's where uh, Joshua can come into play because we know Joshua, being an Olympic gold medalist, is a technically he's a good boxer, and he can punch as well. So. You know, his class should shine through, but it's definitely uh, an interesting fight. The thing that surprised me about Ngannou specifically in his assets is the much bigger man against Joshua. Joshua's never really dwarfed in the ring by anyone else. Also, his arms are so long, the reach band that he has with the jab, although maybe his jab's not the most proficient jab, but still so effective because he has that reach. How does someone like Joshua overcome that long jab? Yeah, like you say, he's a, he's a man in of a man. And, um, you know, he, he's a difficult opponent for anybody, but I believe that... Um, you know, Joshua's got that bit of class about him, that bit of pedigree. And uh, I think he'll be able to uh, navigate his round, himself around in Ghana and be able to outbox him. When it comes to Fury versus Usyk, who are you hanging your hat on? Uh, I'm just leaning towards Fury. Obviously, we don't want to see the same Fury that come in uh, last time against Ngano. And uh, I, I would have thought he'd be better prepared physically and mentally for this fight. He's had plenty of time and... Um, I'm just leaning towards Fury just on the, on the fact that he's such a difficult man to beat. And as good as Usyk is boxing-wise, technically, it's hard to get near Fury, uh, especially of someone of Usyk's stature and height. It, I think it'd be difficult to uh, pin Fury down and not get it with the long shots, the jabs on the right hand. So I'm just leaning towards uh, Fury points decision. Heading into a camp of such magnitude, there are whispers that are falling out of the camp. Whispers of the likes of Tyson Fury was knocked down, he's manhandled. Eddie Hearn disputes that any of those happen regarding when it comes to Jaya Bataya's involvement there. But when you hear those things, does it concern you? Uh, heading into a undisputed, undisputed fight for Fury's sake, if he gets the victory, those things shouldn't be leak, uh, leaking out if they are true or not? Yeah, I heard the Opataya one. I don't. I heard that was false. That was. I don't, I don't know. I don't know who first brought that out, but I heard that was false and. Uh, so I don't really know what's gone in on Fury's camp, to be honest. But he's had plenty of time to get ready. So, and he's and he and he's got ready for. He's had a long career and he's got ready for uh, all the big fights that he's been involved in. So, I would have thought that he'd be in good condition for this fight, if not probably the best condition he's been in. Finally, do you see any form of decline in Fury's recent performances at all heading into that Usyk fight? Well, obviously, as they say, you're as good as your last fight, and he, he didn't look that great. But we don't know, like as I say with Vengano, we didn't know what type of a fighter he, he was or what he was going to bring. So we don't really know how good Vengano is until Joshua faces him. So um, you know, we we know that Fury didn't look great, but I expect him to be a lot better against Usyk. Just to switch the focus to Usyk quickly. Uh, Usyk said in an interview with The Ring magazine, he said that I'm not concerned about Fury leaning over me, which seems to be one of his best attributes. I'm going to lean on Fury. Uh, Usyk's wrestling is something that's been uh, notified by Anthony Joshua's team. They brought in a wrestling coach to try and nullify that. But do you feel that that's counterintuitive, leaning on Fury if Usyk wants to get the victory? Or do you think that little bit of um, unorthodox planning might get Usyk the victory? 
Yeah, I don't know. Maybe it's mind tactics that he's doing. You don't really know, but um, it's a bit of a strange one because of the size difference. But um, yeah, we'll have to see on a night. It's one of them fights that, you know, for the undisputed heavyweight championship of the world, it's one of them fights that everyone's looking forward to watching. And Tony, finally, I'll bring it back to Conor Ben. After this fight, do you feel that after all the noise and things, after the appeal, that you'll get the Chris Eubank Jr. fight if you still want it for Ben? Maybe, you know, I uh, just want to concentrate. Really, like, my view is to concentrate on a world title 147. Okay. But obviously, the magnitude of a, a Eubank fight and the, and the financial rewards that that brings with it, um, you, you know, it's hard to turn down. So we'll just have to wait and see what happens. Tony, pleasure's all mine. Thanks for taking a second, sir. All the best.